Talking Way Wines, doing business with Supreme Liquors. Oops. Please remain standing. Please swear them in. Absolutely. Swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, second call being given at 3.40 p.m. Please take a seat. Supreme Leaders does not seem to be here, neither does the victim, the alleged victim, or the suspect. Notice that there is a letter here of notice that was sent December 19th. Um, so let's proceed. Uh, please state your name and spell them for the record. Officer Julio, K U L I O. Last name is L A R A C U E N T E. And how do I spell, say that? Laura Quente. Laura Quente. Okay, thank you. Officer Raymond Pina. First name R A Y M O N D. Last name Pina, P I N A. Thank you. Also, Penny Zito, P E N N Y S Z E T O. Thank you. Um, whoever wants to start, please. All right, so I'll start on Thursday, November 16th, 2017. I was assigned to Central 10. Myself, Officer Betts, and Ferrer responded to Supreme Liquors for assault that was in progress. On arrival, we were met by Corey Lydon, who reported that he was assaulted by the clerk at Supreme Liquors. And when we started speaking, um, to the clerk, Bobby Pearson. Pearson stated that Lydon approached the counter, uh, began to make a scene. He was asked to leave by the security guards that were on scene. He refused. He started to shout uh, um, slurs pertaining to Pearson's sexual orientation and began to get into an aggressive stance. He started to clench his fist. The, Pearson, the patron? The patron. Um, Pearson felt that he was in fear. Um, that's when he stated that um, he struck, um, he struck light in the face because he, the comments were made because the stance was uh, placed. When I spoke with Lydon, who was the victim that got hit, he stated that he approached the counter, he got into an argument with the clerk, uh, the clerk asked him to leave, he began to yell, Lydon stated that he was approaching the front door when he was leaving, and that the clerk came around and sucker punched him in the face. After he told me that, we had EMS come, they evaluated him, he had blood on the left side of his face and there was also blood that was outside on the windows and on the floor. That's when he called fire to come and decontaminate uh, the area. Officer Lara Fanta, did you speak to the, um, the security guard that was on scene? I did. And what did he say? Uh, they stated that there was an argument between the two, uh, between the clerk and the patron that was going in there. They didn't state anything that was being said, but they say that they asked the patient to leave, and then the clerk came around and then he did sucker punch him. So are you here for something in particular? Uh, no, I'm just attending the licensing hearing. Yeah. For a particular matter? I'm sorry? For a particular matter? Are you here for Supreme Liquor? Uh, for the Middle East, actually. Okay. We already heard that and granted it, just so that you know, you're, you're welcome to okay, stay, but well, I want you to you know. Thank you very much. Yeah, yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no interruptions. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. On um, November 18th, uh, 2017, approximately 11.28 a.m., I, I responded over to the area of uh, Pearl Street for a report of threats. I uh, ended up speaking with the, uh, the reporting party, Corey Lydon. Uh, he stated that he was a victim of an assault on uh, November 16th, uh, 2017 at Supreme Liquors, where he was punched in the face by the store clerk. Um, Lydon did state to me that uh, today, that same day on the 18th, uh, he was walking by Supreme Liquors at approximately 10.15 in the morning, and uh, he noticed Pearson, the store clerk, standing in the window. It states that Pearson made eye contact with him and uh, immediately started mouthing some type of unknown statements to him from within the store. And then uh, Pearson then placed his index finger against his throat and dragged it across his neck as if he were slitting his throat. Uh, Pearson then uh, completed this motion while staring directly at Lydon, he states. Uh, Lydon then uh, states that he observed Pearson walk towards the general area of the doors, which are on an automatic sensor they open. And um, he yelled at him, if you show up in court, I'm going to kill you. Um, Lydon states that he had a doctor's appointment in Boston, so he ended up walking over to the Green, stop, Green Street bus stop after that. Um, 
approximately 10, 27, it was probably about an hour before I took that, that initial report there, um, I had responded to a call at Supreme Liquors. Um, a clerk, Pearson there, was stating that somebody was outside with a baseball bat threatening him. Um, began to, to question Pearson and um, he started making uh, statements basically just uh, kind of out of the ordinary. Um, really uh, seemed like he had some type of um, mental instability, asking me to take my sunglasses off while I was in the store because it was, uh, it was the law in the store, etc. Um, he then had asked about um, Lydon being trespassed, and I said if he's on the trespass list, then you know what's going to have to happen is if he's in the store to call us immediately, we can come down and you know we place him under arrest. Uh, he then started getting very young, cooperative, and belligerent with me, and um, at that point I had left the store. Um, a second call had come in uh, from Lydon actually, and that was. Uh, I want to say that was about a couple hours later, and uh, ended up going over there with uh, so like officers. around noon. Yeah, I was with officers from Car Three. Okay. Um, they had responded over there, and at the point that point in time, I was writing the report when this call had come over. Um, basically, they were in front of uh, the CVS pharmacy to speak with Lydon. Uh, Lydon stated that he was threatened a second time by uh, the store clerk Pearson. Uh, at that time, I ended up responding over there. Um, what Lydon ended up stating to me is that uh, he had walked by the Supreme Liquors again and Pearson exited the store and stated, I'll knock you out and make you suck my dick. At this time, um, Officer LaMonica of Car 3, he walked into the uh, Supreme Liquors to speak with Pearson, the store clerk at this time. Um, I was directed over to a witness, uh, Melissa Bain, who uh, appeared to be uh, completely sober at the time. She's a, uh, a resident of uh, 240 Albany Street. Um, she said that she was standing in front of Supreme Liquors with her boyfriend. Uh, and, um, she was startled by Pearson, who was screaming and stated at 3 p.m. You know he would see him. Um, but Bain then states that Pearson continued to state something along the lines of "I'll punch him in the face and make you suck my dick." I then asked Bain if he knew Lydon, and she states that he's never seen her. She's never seen him before, so there was no connection between the two of them. Um, Officer LaMonica had then exited the uh, Supreme Liquors and stated that Pearson was very aggressive and uncooperative uh, during his interview with him. Um, Officer LaMonica then uh, stated to Pearson that uh, he made mention to his interaction on uh, November 16th with Leiden. And uh, Pearson made the, uh, a statement stating that um, I walked outside and punched him in the face because he called me a fag. That's what happens when you poke the beer. Um, at this time, uh, when Officer LaMonica had exited the store, uh, Pearson was uh, still yelling, yelling and shouting at officers. I had asked him to, uh, to calm down, basically uh, stop antagonizing us and uh, to go back in the store. He refused, stating, I'm in my store, I'm standing in the entranceway, I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, he continually uh, verbally engaged lighting. He was standing with officers at the time, up until the time that the door was shut. And, uh, Um, I was able to collect video for the incident that occurred on uh, November 16, 2017 at the uh, Supreme Liquors. Uh, the video was provided by Stephen Wilkinson, the general manager. Uh, he did downloaded two videos, uh, two video clips onto the memory stick. Uh, first clip was by the cash register and the second clip was by the front entrance of the store. Uh, both videos provide only visual, no audio. Uh, the first video shows words being exchanged between the store clerk and the victim at the cash register. Uh, the second video shows the victim being escorted by two security guards at uh, 8.36 p.m. Once the victim is outside the store, the clerk goes after the victim, followed by the two security guards. There is a confrontation outside the store between the clerk and the victim. The two security guards are trying to separate both parties by standing in between them. Then at 8.37 p.m., the clerk throws a punch with his right hand in between the security guards. After throwing the punch, the clerk is seen checking his hand while returning inside the store. And to be clear, Officer Zito, these are the security guards from the Supreme Liquor, yes. not either of the officers that no. responded? No. Okay. Yes. And uh, at that time, uh, I, uh, management has not taken any action against this employee. You said that um, at one point, the Pearson, uh, 
his behavior towards you was? How would you categorize cat cat uh, it? It seemed that some type of mental instability. He started mumbling, like statements under his breath to the point that I couldn't even understand what he was saying. And that he was uh, very agitated. And at that point in time, I want to say maybe there was another clerk in the store. Um, it was just the two of us off to the side. He didn't. Uh, I asked him. I asked to speak with him initially, and then. Um, there was a, a patron inside the store, so I was like, you know what, why don't you finish up with the patron? I'll stand off to the side. And I went to stand off to the side, and uh, you know, just his attitude, well, when, whenever you're ready, I'll be here. And I'm just like, well, I prefer that you finish with the patron so we don't have to, you know, I didn't I know what the, uh, the, the subject or whatever it was, he was gonna tell me at that point in time. I didn't want the patron to have to be within earshot. So, um, he, but his attitude just, just snowballed after that with me. It depends. I didn't have my sunglasses on. Or I had my sunglasses on. He didn't like that. And what, was that before or after he allegedly threatened? Uh, so that that actually um, that took place. I believe that's where the, the threat took place. He was he was calling me about that actual interaction. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm and then I got the call from Lydon maybe about an hour later. I gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Officer Pena, were you in uniform during yes. this visit to Spring? Yes, I was working uh, as uh, Central Town, I believe, that day. Okay. Yes. And Officer Puente, can you tell me, was it Supreme Liquors that called the police? On yes, the it was actually event? the clerk that called the police. Let's respond. That was assault in progress. And we have confirmed that this individual, um, Pearson, is actually an employee of Supreme Liquors, Officer Zito? Yes. And he is still he is still employed there? Do I um, last time when I went to grab the video on let me see what day that. Uh as of December fifth, yes, he was still employed. Um, and you responded which day? Uh, it was in November. November sixteenth. Anything else? Um, based on the testimony and uh, I would say that this I would find a violation I would issue a suspension uh, of three days and considering that the licensee has not taken any action meaning disciplinary action as to this employee and did not bother to show up I would add two days to that making it a five-day suspension okay. violation five-day suspension thank you, thank you.